Uh, I am borrowing slides from uh, my former student, Kyunghyun Cho, uh, who is now, now at uh, New York University. And uh, I took, uh, took some, some uh, or a subset of his slides. So let's, let's hope this works. So, yes, about, uh, this will be about uh, natural language understanding or language modeling and uh, with, uh, with a deep learning perspective. So, so a large part of language understanding can be, can be seen as, uh, as uh, if we are able to tell how, how likely a sentence is. Uh, for instance, if we have a question, who is the president of the United States, a likely answer might be that Obama is the president of the US, an unlikely answer is that, that Tsilpas is the president of America. So, um, we had the caption generation example where, where we have a context of, uh, in a visual form and, uh, and now the sentence of two dolphins are diving is likely and, and two men are flying are, is unlikely. And uh, you could have a language model without any context. So you just uh, ask that is this a likely sentence in this language in general. Uh, without the question, without the image, you might have a uh, audio signal as context, then we would talk about speech recognition or, or the context might be a sentence in another language. So then we talk about machine translation. So how, how likely would the sentence be in, in the context of, of translating it from, from another language? Okay. Um, so let's... Uh, we find some uh, symbols here that, that the sentence, each word is, is uh, X, and the sentence might be the cat is eating a sandwich on a couch. Uh, and we ask how likely is this sentence? So what is the probability of, of seeing this, uh, this uh, sequence of words? Um, so if we talk about probabilities, uh, there are joint probabilities, conditional probabilities, and uh, we can give the joint probability of, of uh, or we can uh, write the joint probability as, as a factorized with, with giving the first, first one of them and then the, the other condition on the first one. And uh, similarly for, for the whole sentence we might factorize the joint probability of the whole sentence into uh, into product of, of a probability of the next word given all the previous ones. So this, this is true in general. It's just a very basic probability theory. And we can even represent this graphically. So basic uh, Language modeling approach is, is uh, n-grams, where we would um, we would uh, simply count how often a particular combination of words appears. Uh, so we take uh, n consecutive words and count how, how often this uh, string appears in, in a, a large corpus of text. And then with those statistics we can compute the probability of the next word as using those counts. So, so those counts would, would tell, tell you that uh, how often in a particular context the next word has been this or, or whether the next word has been some other one. 
and uh, and here here's a result of of uh, uh, estimating if you apply n grams on on the sentence I would like to comment the rapport, rapporteur on his work uh, and using unigrams which means that that each word is considered separately without any context uh, and uh, the word I is very common so, so there's a um, yeah the, the smaller the number the, the, the better the prediction or, or less surprise there is about encountering that word next um, and the uh, biogram means that you would consider the context of one previous word only so so in the context of uh, seeing I how often the next word is would and in a three gram let's say how often in the context of to comment the next word is the and that, that's a three gram model and four, four gram model and uh, and the, you can see that the, the, the larger the context, then the more accurate the model is. That's, that's the beginning. But then there's an issue that, uh, that let's say, in your training data, you never, never saw... Uh, this is a test sent sentence in the test data. And, and in training data, you never saw a tenured professor, this uh, a trigram of a tenured professor. So if you do use that as a language model, then in test sentence, you, you get a sentence like this. Uh, it would give a probability zero because it, it hasn't seen it ever. So, so then the probability for the whole sentence will be zero and, and the performance on the whole test data will be basically infinitely bad. So you have to somehow be able to generalize into unseen things. And uh, there are some tricks that can be done in, in, uh, in this n-gram modeling world to do some smoothing or, or back off, which means that you also consider shorter n-grams, not just the long ones. But still, they lack generalization. That, uh, let's say, in text you might have Chase is a dog, Chase is a cat, Chase is a rabbit, but you don't, you don't have Chase is a llama. You don't have it in your training data. But if you know that, that the llama is an animal, like, like a rabbit or a dog or a cat, then sometimes uh, after Chase is a, uh, there's some kind of an animal. You might, there's still, uh, still a, it would be possible to say that chasing a llama is, is a reasonable phrase. Just because a llama is somewhat similar to dog, cat, or rabbit. And these n-gram models cannot do this generalization. They consider each word completely separate from each other. So something better can be done. And uh, neural, neural language modeling is, is something that can do it. So instead of uh, using those n-gram counts, you, you just uh, put a neural network in there. And the neural network might, might look like the previous example. You might uh, encode words with uh, so-called uh, one-hot vectors, where you have a long vector which is uh, the size of your vocabulary. And most of it is zero, but there's a one to indicate which word it was. And then once you encode your data into vectors, then you can use the same uh, deep learning methods that I, I showed in the context of handwritten digits. So instead of a three gram, you might have a network where you have three three words encoded into the network and, and going through, through a network. And, uh, 
at the output they would produce the probability of the next word being one of those different options. So you would have the, the length of the vector would be the size of your vocabulary. I'll skip the details and yeah, mention that that this this can actually generalize to this uh, llama rabbit type of uh, modeling that 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 if it maps all the words words into to the abstract representation space, if the words are semantically related to each other, they will be close to each other in in the abstract uh, higher level representations and and once they are mapped forward then you can actually generalize to cases where that you haven't seen and you can actually study what those uh, representations might look like so so here's here's a, a 2d representation of, of some words some sub part of, of, of all words and uh, and words that are uh, related to each other are actually close to each other in the, the abstract space and you can actually find find out things that there might be some kind of uh, some kind of a thing that uh, That, uh, that in the abstract space London minus UK so, so the vector that points from a representation of UK to representation of London is somewhat somewhat equal to the representation of Paris minus the representation of France so not only are similar things close together but there are some uh, semantic relationships that that you can uh, as we saw this interpolation between images you, you can actually do do uh, computations with those representations somehow so yes th this has been observed with those representations and uh, and it's also possible to make a recurrent model where we don't restrict ourselves to let's say the, the history of three previous words but we, we can make it uh, take into account all the previous words by, by building a recurrent model where we have some kind of a hidden state and the next word takes the previous hidden state and changes it somehow and and then this hidden state carries information from from all the history and uh, we just uh, build build a neural net neural network like 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 that to make it recurrent and we can uh, train it like before uh, maybe still about the uh, machine translation that it's possible not only to map single words into abstract representation but you can you can actually map whole sentences into an abstract representation this image is not very clear but but there's a sentence in English economic growth has slowed down in recent years and and we have all those word representations here and we map them into some uh, representation space of words then we have a recurrent model that gathers all the information about this sentence into one vector, one big vector that uh, represents the whole sentence. And then we have a, another network that produces a sentence in French uh, that carries the same information as, as this sentence in English. So we first uh, cram everything into one single vector and then then we unroll it in, in a different language and uh, 
it's su surprising that, that this actually works, <laughs> that uh, you can do it. And uh, even, even having uh, sentences up to 20, 20 words cramped into one vector that you can, you can still read out. Uh, but it takes a lot of computation, computational effort to train this and lots of data. But uh, data is available, like Wikipedia. And, uh, and the very most f weird thing is that you can actually take this exact same model, exact same implementation, and just uh, 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 replace this part with uh, a computer vision algorithm that, that, uh, that takes an image and represents the image as a vector. And, uh, and then there's the other network that that uh, describes the contents of that vector. And so you, you put two machine translation model in and a computer vision model together and it just works. At uh, those uh, caption generation examples were, were done just like that. And now, now if we can uh, map everything into, into vectors and, and operate with them like like this, regardless whether they are images or sound or or text, we can we can do wonderful things. That's the conclusion.